You know, another thing, um, Javier, to consider besides, um, you know, the schools and, and the other drivers that are around, what uh, the police don't want this person to do is put themselves in a situation where it becomes even more harmful to the public, like running into a store or, you know, you know uh, running into a place that's highly populated where it makes it more difficult for police officers to safely take uh, the driver uh, and, and the suspect or suspects into custody. Uh, but, you know, sometimes the crowd can help. It's, you can see how they end up slowing down, but again, police have to consider, is this a safe place to take this person down? And wow, he's, uh, he or she driving up there on the sidewalk at 24th Street and Camelback. Uh, no surprise, because it is so busy in this intersection. Oh my goodness. Uh, and you can see cutting right across the traffic there. And probably right in front of an unsuspecting driver. Now you're going to see some of the, uh, stay with us, Gina, some of the higher rise buildings in this general area. Again, at 24th Street and Camelback, now pushing closer to 20th Street, which is where town and country is. And you can't help but wonder at some point if we see this erratic driving where there is a public safety hazard, whether police will move in to try to stop this low speed pursuit and you see a vehicle uh, Jill had mentioned this earlier because we asked the demeanor of the driver she was closest when she saw this vehicle pass her asking uh, you know whether they appeared frazzled and she said uh, the female driver appeared very calm and that the public might not even know what was going on if they were just driving next to that vehicle well early on and we've been seeing uh, some of the shots from Bruce up there in the Fort Vidal Casino news chopper earlier on when when this driver was up near 7th Ave and Bell now more than an hour ago. We were able to see a close-up shot of the driver. Uh, we were able to see she's wearing green. Yeah. She may have driven past you. I believe it appeared uh, from here in the studio as though she was on a cell phone. Now it looks like she's going to cross over into oh. oncoming traffic. And My this, goodness. Yeah, this is where it gets dangerous right here. This is right past 20th Street and the oncoming traffic off the 51, uh, 51 right there. And so she's maneuvering Maneuvering, uh, possibly trying to get on 51. No, she stayed on Camelback. My goodness. And now is continuing to head westbound on Camelback. And uh, again, now that's just going over the 51 freeway. Yeah, and she'll be approaching 16th Street right here. Uh, just to give you a little more information as far as why we continue mm -hmm. with this, we are told that this is a potential burglary. You'll oh see boy. Oh, almost a car. Whoa, my goodness. Okay. okay, so there was a collision. Clipped. They clipped the, the back of a vehicle. That's right at 16th Street in Camelback, and the key of the suspect vehicle continues. Wow, that could have been a lot worse. You just hope the driver of the other vehicle, who had no idea what was going on, is okay. Uh, it didn't look like a massive collision, but certainly that person knows exactly what happened. They've been hit. Now, there are a lot of car dealerships in this part of town as this driver continues to head westbound on Camelback back toward the North Central Phoenix area. Yeah, and this is where it gets scary because there's got to be some desperation setting in as they've been traveling for uh, about an hour and a half plus. And this is where we are worrisome because when you get to an intersection, there's desperation in there. They're trying to get away. And we just saw one, one vehicle being clipped. Uh, we got to brace and hope that there aren't more. Okay, I believe that the driver just went past 12th Street and Camelback now approaching, uh, well, the next major stoplight is going to be Central. And right there on that corner, you've got another AJ's store. You've got uh, a Good Egg. You've got an Applebee's. That This is on the north part of Camelback. To the south, you've got a Bank of America. You've got some high rises there at Central. Now, Central, should she decide to turn either north or southbound, can be very tricky and quite slow. And we've watched them travel uh, the Central Phoenix area before. And so I don't know if they're familiar with this area, but they headed down 16th Street uh, earlier when this whole thing was going on. And that's when they went into South Phoenix, uh, into downtown Phoenix, and then worked their way through Tempe towards Sky Harbor and then doubled back around. And now it appears they're headed back to Central Phoenix. Okay, so let's continue to watch this as it unfolds. There is a uh, paint store there on the south. Another furniture store. Looks like this driver is continuing to pick up some speed here. And as they do, I don't know about you, Abby, but I'm getting very worried about this particular intersection here. 
We've watched, we've watched that driver drive up on uh, the sidewalk trying to avoid some of the traffic. We've watched the driver swerve around some other vehicles. Uh, we've watched the driver clip another vehicle. So this has become more and more worrisome. No doubt about it, Javi. And you know, another thing that police uh, need to consider as they uh, continue to follow this suspect also, too, is uh, the crowds around here. Because now that we're into central Phoenix, these streets are very busy. Even though we're done with the rush hour, lots of folks travel in and around through this area here. And you've got the light rail real close as well, and folks on the light rail. And uh, there, looks like we're turning into. There's, okay, they're, they're moving in to stop this vehicle, and it's obviously a police. Uh, vehicle undercover right there, but they know at some point it's dangerous. They clip that vehicle, and what is called uh, what is one of their maneuvers. They weren't able to stop that, but they're close behind. Yeah, and there you go. And there's one of those vehicles that, you know, they, they have the lights built into the grill. And uh, it, no doubt an, a police officer there. And now, you know, I guess you could term, term this a uh, hot pursuit because uh, they are full on uh, behind this. And it looks like the speed's definitely picking up. This is where it gets dangerous. And this is actually right down the street from the station. Uh, you can hear our newsroom screaming because it's right outside. But uh, these, uh, once there is an accident of some sort, uh, that's when they're trying to stop this because this is dangerous and that's where that suspect took off. So we're northbound on 7th Avenue here heading towards Bethany Home Road. And, you know, it looks like that that vehicle uh, missed the opportunity. And so it looks like they have actually backed off that police officer. Uh -huh. So they're following very closely, um, moving in to try to stop, but watch at this intersection here. Ooh. Wow, that was very close. We've watched too many close calls, and I know the police department wants to stop this. Yeah, no doubt. And what they don't want, and what we've seen now, is an escalation here. You've seen uh, the speeds increase. They're northbound on 7th Avenue, north of Bethany Home Road. Uh, here comes an accident of some sort, and hope... Here it is at this intersection. Oh boy. Wow. And that vehicle, okay, it appears a tire is blown. It went up the curb right there. Uh, that is near Maryland. A guy took off, jumped out of the car, took off running. We don't know about the driver, but the police officers are right behind. Okay, and there you go. They're running into the building and officers in hot pursuit on, the, on foot here. There's the female driver right there. And what they don't want is, is uh, for somebody to get into an office building there and create a potential hostage situation. Uh, the woman's still outside, and uh, it will likely be easier to apprehend her. You've got an officer coming on the other side, guns drawn, still running here, but on the grass, and there she goes. She's being taken down by a police officer as we speak. And there's another suspect. We saw him in a white T-shirt of some sort. He worked his way into that office building space. Uh, we don't know if they've been able to take him into custody, but we're hoping that everybody involved in the two accidents that we saw are okay. No doubt about it, Javi. And they, they took her down quickly. They weren't messing around. And, and um, she's face down. There's no doubt putting her hands behind her back, handcuffing her there. And uh, other officers uh, trying to track down the male suspect at this point. Yeah, we saw there were a few different officers who were following close behind, chasing that male subject. And as soon as that car went up the sidewalk and crashed and one of the tires was blown, that's when we saw what we had heard all along that there was some sort of male subject in the back of that vehicle, that's when we saw him bail out of that car and take off running. Mm. And uh, more and more police officers showing up on the scene to help out. You know, uh, the Phoenix Police Department, as do many of the police departments here in the Valley, have uh, units that they call SAU, Special Assignments Units. And they're, they're the, the lead teams, as far as the SWAT teams are concerned, they do a lot of the undercover surveillance uh, work. And, and no doubt that uh, a lot of these officers are probably part of that SAU team help to take down that woman. And at this point, we still don't have information on the male suspect who went running into the building. And you just hope that they're able to take him into custody without any problems, without, heaven forbid, any kind of a hostage situation. And this just confirms what you had mentioned a while back uh, about all of these undercover officers, although we didn't see the marked cruisers. Uh, and there's the second sub suspect right there. Uh, they have him in custody as well. Uh, taking them down. Uh, but this just confirmed that although we didn't see those officers, uh, we, there were 
a lot of officers and it appears there's a lot of blood right there. Mm -hmm. We don't know where that blood is from. Yeah, it looks like it's on his face. And did you see the officer on the back end there? He was uh, grabbing his legs. Uh, that tells me that he, the suspect was probably fighting. And so they probably wanted to hog tie him, at, not only for his safety, but their safety is to avoid being kicked, but uh, to safely take him into custody. For those of you who are just joining us, this is the end of a chase that started in North Phoenix around 7th Street and Bell, what, maybe now an hour and a half ago, yeah, Javi? Yeah, it has been some time. We picked it up uh, into the 9 o'clock hour. This was a chase that started somewhere near Deer Valley Airport, I-17 and Bell. We watched as this car s slowly maneuvered its way through central Phoenix, went into downtown Phoenix, and then uh, we want to show you the accident where it happened, and this is where it got scary. And shortly before this, this is when those police officers moved in, but this is the crash that ended mm. that. And is that Glendale or Maryland? That's Maryland. Maryland. Okay. Just north of Bethany Home Road, halfway between the two. And it blew a tire. You see the male suspect jump out of the car, take off running into that office building. And then shortly after that, we saw the female driver take off running. Yeah, she ran to the south into the grassy area, tried to jump a, sh a, sh a small wall, but w was not able to get away. Officers took her into custody pretty quickly. And then the male, he ran through the building. It looks like he may have run out the other end, and then they were able Able to take him into custody in the parking lot as well on the west side of that building. Again, 7th Avenue in Maryland, for your reference, Maryland halfway between Glendale and Bethany Home Road. And there is the suspect vehicle where it came to its final resting place. Yeah, slammed right into a tree after a blown tire after an accident. We saw two accidents. Uh, one of them is where the suspect driver clipped a vehicle that was at uh, about 16th Street That's and right. Camelback. And that was the first accident. And then this uh, vehicle continued down Camelback, headed up 7th Avenue, and came to the final stop there after another accident at 7th Avenue in Maryland. You know, Javi, we made a uh, note that the suspect, the male suspect, had kind of a bloody face. And here we go. We're replaying for you the way this thing came to an end. It was a, a crash there at 7th Avenue in Maryland. Uh, eventually, that suspect vehicle uh, spins out, hits a palm tree, and then the suspects take off running. But going back to the male suspect and the blood on his face, looking at that impact, hitting a stationary object at that velocity, I got to wonder if that blood is from the actual accident, the collision itself. Yeah, we don't know. Let's hope that the person in the white vehicle yeah. there uh, headed east on Maryland is okay as this, as well as the other vehicle that had been clipped at 16th Street and Camelback. Uh, we're still trying to gather some details and figure out what uh, this is now live. So you see that vehicle, a lot of officers in that area, uh, both suspects in custody. We were told from the beginning that this was a burglary suspect of some sort, but we don't have too many details beyond that. And uh, we certainly have crews on the scene here at 7th Avenue in Maryland. We have been following this chase since it started uh, more than an hour and a half ago. And there you go, firefighters on the scene helping uh, the innocent victims that were just minding their own businesses, trying to drive there on the streets of Phoenix, crossing Maryland, and basically getting into what was a, nearly a T-bone accident there uh, with the suspect as they crossed right through 7th Avenue, likely a red light. And this appears two people in that vehicle, if not more. Uh, we thank you for staying with us. Uh, we will have a complete wrap-up starting tonight at 4.30 on Good Evening Arizona.